Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today show. And today our topic matter is leg cramps. And uh, this affliction hit me this week as I scream and my husband goes and grabs the magnesium cream and I go get some electrolytes. But I want to talk about leg cramps, their causes, um, some diet changes or suggestions, and then also some supplements. Now, uh, anytime we're hitting the caffeine a little heavier because we haven't slept the night before very well, or uh, you're doing a lot of sugar or soda, um, you're gonna deplete your electrolytes and your minerals. So uh, when you have leg cramps, um, your body requires a good calcium, magnesium, potassium balance for the uh, muscles to be able to constrict and to relax. And what happens is, is when you, and as we go through these causes, have any of these causes, and you deplete those electrolytes, you'll get muscle spasming and cramps. So um, causes, number one, uh, excessive sweating or exercising depletes your electrolyte minerals. So when you perspire, obviously, minerals go through your, your uh, sweat glands and out through your body and in your sweat and you deplete. In addition, physical activity causes you to deplete the minerals out of the muscles and if you ever notice when you work out you tend to have to uh, go pee. Well, that depletes your minerals and when you deplete your minerals in turns that can cause leg cramps. Um, lack of minerals or lack of having it ingested in the diet, we're going to talk about some of the vegetables that are rich, vegetables and fruits that are rich in potassium and um, some of those electrolytes. But when you do not have adequate amounts of potassium, 4,700 milligrams is the uh, requirement for overall general health and about 600 milligrams, four to 600 milligrams of magnesium per day. The National Institute of Health uh, states that we, on an average, Americans only get about 40% of the adequate amount of magnesium from their foods, even with the best of diets. Because we've got all this commercial farming and we just don't see these trace minerals, potassium, and electrolytes found uh, within our foods. Um, anemia, and I know a lot of people don't think in terms of anemia being a potential cause of uh, leg cramps, but when you're iron deficient or B12 deficient, that can cause muscles to cramp up. Uh, you can't transfer oxygen very well, the nervous system gets tight, and the muscles will stay tight and they will cramp. Particularly, you will notice this a lot at, in the nighttime. Um, when you have arterial sclerotic uh, changes in the vascular system, so for example, when you get hardening of the arteries, and a lot of people you can see the evidence of it with varicose veins and spider veins, uh, heart valve problems. Now when your vascular system gets hardened, obviously it can't allow blood in adequately into the, um, the muscle tissues and you'll get spasms and cramps. Hardening of the arteries, and we have a whole separate show I think I did on varicose veins uh, and then I think on arterial sclerosis as well uh, that will be on uh, YouTube forward slash VH film. You can find those shows on that. But when you've got that hardening of the arteries, it's very difficult to reverse. It takes time, uh, vitamin C, magnesium sources, once again will make the vascular system more pliable and, and, and flexible. But that hardening of the arteries doesn't allow for much blood to get through into your muscle tissues. And even actually sometimes your veins and arteries, when you're trying to pass through blood, it's trying to pass it through. And I'll be doggone if they'll cramp and spasm as well too. Excessive phosphorus found in particularly red meat, but meat overall and soda depletes calcium and magnesium, particularly magnesium. So when you drink a soda, it's like it's pulling these minerals right out of your muscle tissues and right out of your bones. Ah, one of the worst things in, uh, to deplete overall general health as far as minerals are concerned. Now, what's interesting about uh, muscle spasms and cramps, we can look at it from all these mineral standpoints and, and various types of uh, lack of minerals or depletion of minerals, but in severe cases, it can actually mean blood clots. So if you've got a muscle spasm or, uh, or leg cramp that is not going away and it stays continually like that, 
you need to get yourself into urgent care or the hospital as soon as you possibly can because that can denote lake, uh, uh, blood clots as well too. Now, there are medications uh, that, <laughs> that you can take including, oh my gosh, the list goes on, acid redux drugs, you know, um, uh, diuretics, high blood pressure medications, the list can go on and on and on that block the uptake and absorption of potassium, magnesium, your actual minerals. Therefore, your muscles end up very depleted. Now, remember, your heart is a muscle too. So when you run electrolyte deficient, you're getting little, little warning signs going on in your legs. That's a warning sign that you're not getting enough minerals to your heart either, and that can cause a heart attack. So you need to take these leg cramps serious uh, and get to the bottom of how to actually solve the problem, not just treat the symptoms. I had one of my customers say, well, you know, we just drink pickle juice. And I'm like, yeah, that will stop it initially, but it doesn't get to the root of the problem. And so when we look at these causes, be it mineral deficiencies, anemia, B12, certain medications, you need to get to the root cause of the problem uh, in order to address it versus just doing a surface type of treatment. Now, when we look at the types of foods that we should be eating, they are rich in potassium. Now, it's virtually impossible to get adequate amount of magnesium from your food any longer. It just is not there with all the commercial farming. You almost, you have to supplement magnesium. Uh, even the best of vegetarians with 10 servings of fruits and vegetables per day are gonna have a hard time getting adequate amounts of magnesium. But I've written on, on, on the, uh, the board uh, a list of foods that contain high amounts of potassium and thereby actually good amounts of magnesium as well too. Now you don't see bananas in this list. Everything I have listed on here has at least 500 milligrams or more of potassium. Remember your body requires 4,700 milligrams of potassium per day and four to 600 milligrams of magnesium. So bananas ain't gonna cut it, plus they're very high in sugar. So we're looking at a lot of the spinach and the squash and the carrots and the mushrooms, beets, um, and then we look at the uh, fruits as well. And it's not things that you would tend to think about like cantaloupe, kiwi, apricots. Those are very guava. Those are very rich in potassium. But once again, remember, you're gonna have to be sticking with eight to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables per day to get adequate amounts of potassium. Um, now, once again, potassium and magnesium are probably the key minerals for muscle spasms uh, and leg cramps. <sighs> you know, we can sometimes, and sometimes I find myself, I'll supplement adequate with the magnesium, but then if I run short on my potassium foods, or if I decide to have a couple cups of coffee like I did this last week, because I hadn't slept very well the night before, that depleted my potassium levels and my little toes and calves were seized up so bad that, oh man, painful, painful in the middle of the night. So, diet suggestions besides eating all those good lists of, of fruits and vegetables, and you can go online and get a more complete list, but this is gonna probably be very common foods that you would tend to eat. Now obviously you're gonna avoid excessive meat consumption and boy, absolutely no soda. Soda, once again, that phosphorus just depletes your minerals and I'll be doggone, you're gonna find when you deplete those minerals, once again, you're gonna have leg cramps. Sugar, caffeine, depleting, depletes minerals as well. Now, we don't think of sugar as depleting minerals, but it does. Sugar is probably one of the most common de uh, depleters of minerals. When you eat sugars or you have diabetes, you're gonna pee a lot and you're gonna pee out your minerals. Diabetics have to be very cognizant of getting adequate amounts of magnesium and potassium extra in their diet. Eight glasses of water a day. You know, preferably purified water. I'm not into distilled water because remember the purified water does have some trace minerals in there and those trace minerals are important uh, from a standpoint of your overall health. There's 72 trace minerals, but those are also part of the electrolytes that your body requires. We we'll wanna keep salt at no more than 2,200 milligrams per day. That means uh, sodium chloride, so uh, 
1,000 milligrams of sodium, 1,200 milligrams of chloride. So that's about, what, a half a teaspoon of salt a day? I mean, one uh, can of Campbell's soup, can you imagine, can give you 1,400 milligrams of sodium, which way would exceed your daily requirement. So to be very, very careful with canned goods and the excessive amounts of sodium. Now, I know one of my customers came in today and she says, you know, I was reading online, if you're sweating a lot, you need to take salt tablets and lots of extra salt. And I was horrified because, yes, you do lose some salt, but it's primarily potassium and magnesium that you lose during heavy exercise and uh, movements, motions, and perspiration. So, you know, you can kind of count your salt up, but very few people, unless they're really watching every grain of salt, are sodium deficient. Now I've written some supplements um, on the board that I think, and this gets to the bottom line besides the foods of what you can do to stop these cramps. Magnesium citrate, and now that is from a plant-based source of magnesium. There's also a, a Krebs a listing of magnesiums that contain various different magnesiums that work on muscles and nerves. And you need 200 milligrams two to three times a day. Um, once again, hard to get from food. If you're eating your eight to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, 200 milligrams of supplementation is probably all that you need. Magnesium cream. Remember how I said that my husband jumped up and got me the magnesium cream in the middle of my agony and spasms? Magnesium oftentimes applied directly to muscle spasms and cramps can alleviate it much, much quicker. Now, higher dosages of magnesium can cause a little loose stools and in this country, that's probably a good thing because bottom line, we have more constipation here than I think other parts of the world because of our lack of fiber and the lack of magnesium that we have. Um, good multiple vitamin high in Bs. You've got to have adequate amounts of Bs in order for your muscles and your nervous system to work properly. So if you don't have the Bs, Oh, man, you can't absorb oftentimes the minerals. Well, not oftentimes, you can't absorb minerals, protein, other nutrients, and they help the nervous system fire properly as well, too. So good multiple vitamin It's going to have some of the other trace minerals that you're uh, needing as well. And not from a warehouse, from a good health food store, please. Ester C with bioflavonoids. Remember how we talked about the hardening of the arteries and the vascular system? Well, a good portion of the time, arterial sclerosis uh, is due to hardening of the arteries, which in turn means vitamin C deficiency. There's tons of studies that were done out of Germany by a Dr. Rast regarding arteriosclerosis, and he basically stated emphatically that if you had adequate amounts of C, which is at least 1,000 milligrams twice a day, arteriosclerosis wasn't going to touch you. I think that's partly true in that you maintain that collagen matrix and the vascular system says pliable and flexible. So keep your C levels up. Uh, B12, 1,000 to 2,000 micrograms per day. Boy, I'll tell you, especially my seniors oftentimes end up very, very B12 deficient. And so that comes up and shows up on blood work. And we just do a little sublingual under the tongue. And that oftentimes can, in combination with the minerals, it will take care of the muscle spasms and cramps in the legs. Iron. Now, when you're iron deficient, too, once again, you don't transfer oxygen well. So the type of iron that you want to totally avoid, and I don't know why physicians recommend this iron, it's ferrous sulfate. I mean, if a baby takes a bottle of vitamins that contain ferrous sulfate iron, you've got to rush them off to the hospital because it's a toxic chemical. And yet they'll turn around and the doctor says, here, take this toxic chemical. They take old railroad ties, combine it with sulfuric acid, and they say, here's your iron. So you want to look for more food sources, um, whole, either whole food irons or a ferrous fumarate or biglycinate, which has a much better absorption, and that can bump up the iron levels at a much better rate and help with spasms. Now, vitamin E. I know that there, the government studies state how wonderful vitamin E, but you know, you hear more news reports and more uh, studies from pharmaceutical companies that down vitamin E, but vitamin E is really necessary for oxygen transfer. Uh, porting, and it really aids and abets your circulation. Very strong antioxidant for the vascular system as well. Keeps the blood flowing. So remember, when you have poor circulation, oftentimes you're going to have those muscle spasms or cramps, and then you raise the risk of also having blood clots as well, too. 
Um, electrolytes then are obviously, you can get these little electrolyte packets. Now, uh, um, there's a couple of companies that make them, but, or you can get them in pills. Um, always the best way to get adequate amounts of potassium is if you can get some organic uh, fruits and vegetables in adequate amounts. But there are packets that you can get of electrolytes. Please avoid the stuff with the high fructose corn syrup. I'm sorry, but most of the sports drinks have that high fructose corn syrup, which actually depletes your electrolytes in the first place. So, um, and I can't say major name brands in that regard. Really, don't even do them. You can go to any good health food store and get some electrolyte pills or electrolyte, uh, there's these little packets that you can get and you mix them in water and I know that's what I do. Now in a pinch, there are homeopathics for leg cramps as well too. They oftentimes contain, well they, m the ones that we have at our stores anyway, contain a little bit of quinine uh, in a homeopathic form that can settle the legs down. But once again, homeopathics treat the symptoms. We want to get to the cause of the leg cramps or spasms. That's with anything in your health. You always want to get to the bottom of what's causing the problem. Now, there's other things that you can do too as well um, besides topical magnesium cream. You can take a nice hot bath in Epsom salts, which is really rich in magnesium. Or I have, for example, I use these little um, um, sea salt minerals I throw in my bathtub when I want to take a bath. And the skin does absorb these, and it does help relax the muscles as well, too. Um, massage and stretching muscle tissues. And you know, it's kind of funny. I, I wanted to look for some type of exercise or something that I could show you uh, for calves and uh, muscle spasms in legs. To be honest with you, there was not a whole lot. So basically what you're gonna look for when you're looking at muscle spasms or cramps, is you want to massage in the long direction of the muscle. So whether it's in the calves, you're going to push down, try to, and, and it's not a real firm movement, just a nice smooth rubbing motion can help relieve it until you can get some electrolytes, magnesium, and magnesium cream. Um, circulation wise, you can get the circulation going as well too. And the same thing that goes with your thighs. And you know, you're just going to push on the muscle down as best you can. I know Oftentimes you're reeking in pain, but sometimes just massaging it out as best you can, or if you've got a partner that can massage it out, is one of the best ways that can uh, aid and assist the re in more immediate relief um, of the uh, leg spasms or cramps. We're going to be moving on next to the research portion of our show. Thank you very much. research portion of our show and with us today is Ralph Turciano. And thank you for that intro. Well one thing you may not find in the news so to say but you hear a lot about it is tuberculosis or TB. Well you may hear about it's you know basically that it's becoming less and less susceptible to the drugs that treat it and how it's becoming more and more pronounced in a large portion of the world. In fact they say 8.7 million people are infected with it every single year and at least 650,000 people have the drug-resistant version. Well, Albert Einstein College made an accidental discovery. What they discovered was quite interesting and totally unexpected. And this was also published in the online journal of Nature Communications, but not in the news. Well, you'd be shocked that vitamin C Yes, that cheap dime a dozen supplement you find on the shelf was found to literally sterilize tuberculosis. Not just drug susceptible tuberculosis, but the strains of MDRTB and XDRTB strains, the very resistant, scary ones. They said, quote, they found out when they were trying to test for cysteine, we're looking for what's called a reducing agent. They triggered the production of reactive oxygen species, sometimes which called free radical, which damaged DNA. And they wanted to see one thing. To test this hypothesis, they wanted to repeat the experiment using an ionized and different reducing agent. 
which happened to be vitamin C. The combination of the ICN-8 and vitamin C sterilized the M. tuberculosis culture. We were amazed to discover that vitamin C by itself not only sterilized the drug susceptible TB, but also sterilized MDR-TB and XDR-TB strains. To justify the testing of vitamin C in a clinical trial, they need to fulfill, find the molecular mechanism by which vitamin C exerted its lethal effect on TB. More research did produce that answer. Vitamin C induced what is known as the Fenton reaction, meaning uh, causing a re iron to react with other molecules to create a reactive oxygen species that killed the TB bacteria. Now they need to do clinical trials in humans. Question is, will we ever see that happen? They said it also helps to know that vitamin C is inexpensive, widely available, and very safe to use. At the very least, this work shows us a new mechanism which we could exploit and attack TB. Again, vitamin D, not so bad. Vitamin C, also very potent. Now, don't hold your breath. We need to see those clinical trials. But, however, if it's a concern to you, why not hedge your bets with something which is non-toxic and it's got a lot of side benefits to it? Vitamin C. All right, and another issue of what you will not find in the news. This has to do with cholesterol and lowering medications again. Remember last show, we looked at how cholesterol medications affect the neurons and cause something called beads on a string, which basically turns your brain to some sort of windy, stringy jello. Well, in a titled article called Cholesterol Lowering Drugs May Reduce Exercise Benefits for Obese Adults, the MAU study finds. Let's figure find where this was printed. It was printed and published, I should say, in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Again, these are published studies, but not in the news. Well, after I'm done reading this, you'll wonder why. All right, they discovered, University of Missouri researchers found that simvastin, and they mentioned the name, not I, otherwise known as the popular name of Zocar, hindered the positive effects of exercise for obese and overweight adults, meaning it's probably just about everybody it does. Fitness has proven to be the most effective, significant predictor of longevity and health because it protects people from a variety of chronic diseases. Unless, obviously, you're taking a cholesterol-lowering medication. Ironic, isn't it? Daily physical activities need to maintain to improve fitness levels and thus improve health outcomes. However, and remember, I'm only reading what they wrote. I'm not ad-libbing. If patients start exercising and taking statins at the same time, it seems that statins block the ability of exercise to improve their fitness levels. Again, not the news. Statins have only been used for about 15 to 20 years, so we don't know what the long-term effects of statins will be on aerobic exercise and fitness and overall health. But we do know how it affects hedge funds in the stock market. That if drugs cause complications with improving or maintaining fitness levels, not everyone should be prescribed these statins. In my opinion, virtually no one should be prescribed these statins. Statins significantly affect the participant exercise outcomes. Participants in the exercise only group increased their cardiorespiratory fitness by an average of 10% compared to only 1.5% in the, those prescribed statins. But here's where it gets good if you're exercising with statins. Additionally, for those taking statins, skeletal muscle mitochondrial content, the site where muscle cells turn oxygen into energy, decreased by 4.5% mm -hmm. in the group taking statins, while the exercise group minus the statins, had a 13% increase in the cell's ability to transfer oxygen. Again, I'm not making it up. It's in the Journal of American College of Cardiology. So wealthy, poor, rich, and powerful, if you're stupid enough to conform without asking questions, then don't complain. All right, after that, common food supplement fights degenerative brain disorders. An interesting study in regards to phosphatidylserine. 
And this was done at Tel Aviv University Department of Human Molecular Genetics, which I have to really give Tel Aviv University a lot of credit. They've come out with great studies. They said fossils at Alzheimer's has been proven to improve cognition and slow memory loss. Has your doctor ever mentioned fossil total serine to you? Probably mentioned Aricept, which obviously was proven not to work. And they found that a special segment of the Jewish population, which they tend to be prone to a disease called uh, familial, and please forgive me if I mispronounce this, dysautonomia, otherwise known as FD, a genetic mutation. They found that the fossil total serine seemed to improve the increase of protein, which had a great benefit. When the supplement was applied to cells taken from FD patients, that disease, the gene function improved. In an elevation, the level of what's called ICAP, or AKA B protein, was observed. And these results were replicated again in a second experiment. It says, and published in the human molecular, uh, human molecular genetics, that we see such an effect on the brain, the most important organ in relation to the disease shows that the supplement can pass through the blood-brain barrier even when administered orally and accumulate in sufficient amounts in the brain. Researchers applied a supplement derived from oysters, the fossil serine they came from, provided by an Israeli company, and they noticed that the production of ICAP proteins increased. And they tested the supplement again on animals to see if the same thing happened, and it did. In addition, researchers said that fossil tolerant the supplement's positive effects extended beyond the production of the proteins which help with the brain. Not only did fossil serine impact the gene associated with this FD disease, but it also altered the levels of a total of 2,400 other genes, hundreds which are also connected to Parkinson's disease and previous other studies. So fossil serine improved the brain, improved conditions of Parkinson's disease and certain genetic disease. The researchers believe that the supplement may have a beneficial impact on the number of degenerative diseases in the, in the brain. It's simple, it's cheap, and it's widely available, and its impact is pretty strong. So pick that up if you can. And last but not least, LED lights. LED lights may cause blindness. Why? Because a short wave intense blue light seems to damage the retina and eyes. And I'm moving a little fast on this one. But this was based on a 2012 study, which they looked at again in the Journal of Phytochemistry and Phytobiology. They found out that LED lights cause things like itchiness, skin, itchy skin, and headaches, and also at the same time, too, damage the retina. The problem is LED lights are being propagated throughout the rest of the world to save money on utilities. And again, they found out if you care about your vision, and I have to go, LED lights damage your retina. And thank you very much for the time on that. Wow, considering we're converting to LED, <laughs> LED, that's funny. Thank you very much for joining our show. Once again, do your research. And we're available um, for uh, old shows on youtube.com forward slash VH film. Thank you.